everyone, and welcome to my second Meet the Author. And today I'm really excited because I'm getting to interview my dad. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a bit weird because we've never really done anything formal like this before. So we'll just see how it goes. Um, but since we're being formal, how about I call you Richard? So Richard. So Richard, yes, exactly. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, Richard. Um, we'll start with the title. Your ch her children call me Richard. So, they do, actually. So. <laughs> um, I don't normally, and I won't I, actually from now on. I tried to get them to call me Grand Dude, but uh, they wouldn't have any of that. It's just Richard. <laughs> the title of your your book. So the first one is called Losing My Virginity. This one is called Finding My Virginity. Did you actually know you, you can't find a virginity? Uh, well, I don't know. If you look long enough, you might be able to <laughs> find it again. Um, um, where, did the, where did the name come from? And what does it sort of mean to you? Well, uh, I suppose losing my virginity was early, early stage in life, um, the first sort of 20 years of struggle. Um, and uh, and then the, the, the next sort of ooh, 20, 25 years, uh, I, I, I suppose we, we, we weren't likely to go bust. We were more on an even, even keel. Um, and, um, and then I suppose the next book will have to be uh, Virginity Found. So we're, it's a sort of a, a, life, a lifetime of, of uh, virginity exploring. Anyway, whatever. So that's whatever. good. You're planning the next book already. I am not writing another book for a while, having just done mine. <laughs> I can understand why you don't want to write another one right away, because it, it, there's a lot of hard work and a lot of... You did, you did a lot of touring. This is Holly's book. I mean, I'm a proud this father. This is the point of this. No, I know. We economy. It's, um, you can find meaning, you can make a living, and you can change the world. And uh, anyway, proud dad. Okay. Back to the one we're actually talking okay. about. Um, so what do you think the motivation was to write this one? Why, why was the timing right now? I personally think everybody should write a book. Um, I mean, there's not, not a person who's listening to this this that does not have a fascinating life because we all we all lead fascinating lives. Um, I think you, could, you you should write a book for your children, for your grandchildren, um, and 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 write it with that with that in mind. And I wrote my first book when I was quite young, uh, losing my virginity. Uh, there's been you know over twenty years uh, since then. Um, life has been ridiculously full and exciting, and and lots of ups and downs. Um, and I think. You know, if you are relatively successful in, in your business area or whatever you're doing in life, um, to share stories so other people who, who are maybe becoming entrepreneurs or growing up in life, they, they, they can perhaps learn from your experiences. So I think, it, I think it's important to do it. And nowadays it's actually much easier to self-publish. Yeah, I, th I, I think, I mean, everybody can self-publish a book and there are even websites where you can put, put, you know, put your book up and... Uh, I think Amazon will take you know self-published books. Uh, we um, I actually set up Virgin Books uh, in order to publish my first book. So our first the first book on Virgin Books was Losing My Virginity, and it became it sold millions of copies, and it actually helped to set up well, set up a new Virgin company. Um, and um, and that, was that because nobody wanted the book, or is that because you had the idea that you thought it would be a great business to have Virgin? Um, it was more the latter, actually, on that one. I think it, we just—I just felt that, um, uh, yeah, there seemed to be quite a lot of interest in what, what, what I was doing. That I had a chance of make, uh, creating a bestseller. So, you know, why, we might as well have the profits stay within the Virgin companies, uh, then, then, then go outside. Um, you know, we went into the record business. Uh, because you know we'd found this tape of tubular bells, and other people didn't want to put that out at the time, and so I thought, screw it, let's start our own record company, and um, and we released tubular bells, and uh, and on the back of it, we built you know the, the biggest independent record company in the world, and um, so uh, you know quite a lot of our businesses have started like that, as, as you know. And there's quite a lot of those stories within the book, which I absolutely loved reading. She liked the the. Um, Oh, the audio book. The audio book, yeah. So I actually, I, I, yeah, I've, I read the book and I also listened to your audio book with you reading it. Mm -hmm. So it was like going to bed at night listening <laughs> to you reading me a bedtime story. Ah. It was actually quite, it was quite cool. It's um, nice when you can carry on reading your daughter bedtime stories uh, in, their, in, in their 30s. Yeah, I loved it. And I'd be walking down the street listening to you <laughs> talking to me. I'd be like, oh, I felt like you're like literally next door to uh, me. Uh, that's nice to know. It's very nice. Yeah, so you've always liked writing. You started your first business basically as an editor of a magazine, starting a magazine. You're always scribbling notes down, you're always writing blogs. Um, how did you find writing 
the book itself because it's quite a daunting experience having a blank piece of paper and knowing where to start. Uh, how did that feel? Well, as you say, I'm, I'm lucky that, I've, that I keep notebooks and um, I keep uh, you know, copi copious notebooks. Um, uh, every meeting I have, I write, I write notes. Um, uh, you know, if there's fun anecdotes, like you know, you start, if, if, when Holly was young, if she said something amusing, um, like you know, uh, I would write it down. Um, so when when um, Holly was about nine or ten, um, we, we got married. Uh, Joe and I got married, and then some friends were getting married, and and um, Holly's words were. Um, they can't be getting married. They haven't had any children yet. Um, so, but if I hadn't written it down, I would have forgotten it. So it, 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 it's getting those little gems uh, and, and hundreds and hundreds of those little gems just make up, make, make for a really good, fun uh, book to read. I think, you know, what, what the way I do a book is, is, um, uh, is, is dictate into a tape recorder, uh, get all the basic stories down, um, you know, put the book into shape, um, I've got a friend, um, Greg Rose, who um, helps helps me organise it. Uh, you know, then then I go through it, and and I think the, the important thing with the book is it 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 it, it should be a really gripping read. Um, it should Which be it certainly is. Oh, it should be fun. It should be a fun book to read, um, and uh, and um, and this, and there should be a good a, a good lot of humour in it as well. I think. Now, you always are writing in your notebooks, um, and I love that, and I've learned that from you. Um, but you've lost quite a lot over the years through the fires you've had. Do you back them up now? I know I keep saying to you, please, we take a picture every week of all the pages that you've written, put them, store them. Are you doing that yet? Well, uh, I mean, one of the advantages of having written two autobiographies is um, when, when, when the boat sinks, uh, the house catches on fire, the, the barn catches on fire, the house on Necker catches on fire, the house on Necker is swept away by hurricanes, uh, all of which make good, good stories in books. Um, uh, I have at least uh, managed to capture most, most of the good stuff out of those notebooks uh, into book form. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm normally, I normally do as I'm told by my daughter, but I, I still haven't backed up my notebooks, the ones that are left for after all these fires. I think it's really worth it. When the fire actually happened on Necker, um, it was one of the first things, once Dad realised everyone was alive, it was one of the first things that he said to us was, oh my gosh, all my notebooks. I'm never writing in my notebook again. <laughs> and then literally the next day, fortunately, he bounced back as he always does. And he was writing like so many notes from then on and he's actually written way more than he ever did before that um so i actually went i actually went back into the house burning in order to try to rescue my notebooks which was and and, I, and within seconds i realized this is the most stupid thing to do and i thought I'll, you know i'll i'll uh, i'll have to let my memory <laughs> my memory cope but that was that was that plus photographs obviously make you cry when you when you lose photographs um you know, now, nowadays, of course, with your, your, your generation, you've got all of that backed up. So the idea of losing, losing pictures is un, unlikely. I think we have the opposite extreme of having too many pictures that are up in the yeah. ether and actually never pull down into albums or, or like yeah. you don't actually see the physical picture anymore. Well, I suppose as a family, we've been lucky. We've had quite a lot of pictures taken over the years. So again, we're, 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 even although we've lost a lot, we've still got quite a few. So when it came to writing my personal chapter, I actually found that chapter the hardest. Um, really opening up about yourself is quite difficult, in my opinion. Um, you've written a whole book about yourself. Um, how did that feel? We've been very lucky as a family. We're a very close family. Um, I mean, I was fortunate that um, uh, how, how close my mum and dad were. Um, uh, you, you've been fortunate that Joan and I have been so close. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's rubbed on with you and Freddie and, and, and the kids. Um, and, um, uh, and we've had, you know, lots of adventures, lots of fun. Um, I mean, some, some of the adventures which we talked about in the book were anything but fun, but, but, but great adventures. Um, and, um, uh, and, and it's often, it's often the moments that are, that are that are not fun uh, that make for be make for a better read. I think the you know books should be warts and all. Um, they should um, uh, the, you know they should cover the te the tears as well as the 
the happy moments. There certainly um, were some tears, especially when I was reading it. <laughs> the, 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 you know, sort of the remembering the hurricane, bringing all of that back, and then the you know, amazing chapter about Granddaddy. Um, when you were writing it, did you find it emotional, or were you writing it a bit more matter-of-factly? If you don't shed a tear, then your book's not going to be worth reading, I think. So, um, uh, and um, you know, I've, I've you know written a story about. Um, my mum, who's now 93, 90, 94 very soon, um, and, uh, and some, you know, she, 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 would, she would laugh as well, uh, but some amusing moments of her, her wonderful forgetfulness, which ha starts happening at that age, um, and um, how my sister turned up, and, um, and she'd forgotten that my sister was coming, and, th and then... Um, my sister asked what she was, well, Vanessa asked what she was doing next week and mum said, I'm seeing um, uh, Mrs. Avenel um, on Monday and, um, and uh, Vanessa said, what are you seeing her for? And mum looks at the diary and says, oh, oh, it's her funeral. <laughs> and, 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 and Vanessa says, well, who is Mrs. Avon? And she says, my mum says, oh, I don't know, but it's a, it's a, I'm going to her funeral anyway. <laughs> so, but, but I think, um, you know, there, there are sad moments. Every family, sadly, has these sad moments, um, but, uh, but you, you've got to laugh, laugh through these sad moments as yeah, well. Yeah, you've definitely been exceptionally open, as if you were talking to a member of the family or, or close friends you've really told all the stories from the heart which it, it all comes across so well and she's not biased she's not my daughter oh she's my daughter <laughs>